Hey there, Internet. It's me, Broken Terrain, and I have a fantastic project for you today. Modular interior walls. I'm pumped to share them with you. Come along and I'll show you how I did them after the drop. All right, first we're gonna start with our bases. And this is going to make everything actually function the way we want it to. Uh, in hindsight, you could probably use a couple of uh, um, steel squares or the, the metal squares from the crafting shop, but uh, I decided to do the, the good old textured uh, foam tiles. So first things first, uh, for me, I cut out four 10 inch by 10 inch tiles. These are gonna fit in my uh, my storage bins for travel. And then I'm gonna mark out the one inch by one inch grid, uh, cut the lines out with an X-Acto first, and then I'm gonna go back in with my pen, widen those lines and make them look good. Now the key to the functionality of this piece are these nuts. I'm gonna take these nuts and press them down <laughs> these nuts. <laughs> I'm going to take the nuts and press them down every two inches into my tile. And this is going to uh, serve as connection points for my modular walls. Why every two inches? Why not every one inch? Oh my God. Well, you'll know if you start doing this project, <laughs> it's mind numbing the amount of work involved, but also because uh, a one inch uh, wide hallway is just ridiculous to try and play with it's hard to get your fingers in in fact normally i would i would suggest not even using walls because it's a whole lot easier to view and and play uh around the table however there are occasions where interior walls are key and boy oh boy this project is going to cover you uh, so when you press that nut into the foam it's going to leave a little line cut that line out <laughs> dig the or cut and dig the foam out hot glue the nut down and do this over and over and over again at every two inch by two inch uh, spot including the edges and then uh, tin foil for texture and I accidentally screwed up and did uh, one of these nuts at the wrong square and I thought well that um, I don't want to do nuts at every square but when I pressed it down, it looked really cool as a design element. And it was killing my fingers, my thumbs doing this. And my youngest suggested I turn it into a stamp. So a little hot glue on the end of a piece of doweling. And this worked amazingly well. And I'm just going to punch one of those uh, cute little hexagon shapes at every uh, one inch intersection. Boy, it took a while but I did get all four of them done. And now it's time to move on to our walls. I'm gonna do a, uh, a stone stonework wall with some wood trim. And in order to get my wood trim, I'm gonna take these craft sticks. I'm gonna take a very coarse rasp or file, and I'm just gonna scrape a really neat wood, uh, wood grain into these pieces. It's very uh, exaggerated, but I love it. I love the way it looks when it's all painted up. In fact, the dry brush just pulls out all this wonderful detail. It takes a long, long time, but uh, with perhaps a little video magic and a snap of my fingers, I'll get them all done nice and quick. No? Snap my fingers? I hope so, because it took forever. <laughs> forever to get this many sticks done. Holy crap. And this was just one third of ultimately what I used. This was one bag. I had to go back and do an entire second bag and well into the third bag. So uh, just a heads up, this will use quite a bit of, uh, of product. However, it's worth it. And I'm still imagining going back and making even more wall sections. Now that I've got my timbers ready, it's time to get my foam ready. I'm gonna take the dollar store foam core, cut it into two and a half inch uh, wide strips. And then I'm gonna take my texture roller and thank goodness I have it because if I didn't, I would have to be doing brick pattern along this whole, all four of these long strips on both sides. And that would take forever. The, the texture roller saved me a ridiculous 
ridiculous amount of time. And if you haven't uh, made your own yet, I'm going to put a link to the video up there. Uh, I highly recommend you check that video out and think about making one for yourself. They save you a ton of time. Once I have my strips textured, I go back in and I'm going to cut them in two inch, four inch and six inch uh, pieces for my walls. And again, this is so that I have those two inch uh, long hallways, wide hallways, and then uh, cut the corners of, of your pieces just enough so that the magnets sit within the two, four, six inch width. Very important so everything lines up. Nothing can overhang that two, four, and six inch space. And once the magnets are hot glued in, just go in, cover them uh, on all sides with a little hot glue, use the tip to shape it. Um, and then I found well, when I encase them in hot glue, I would put the panel down on my, my cut mat and let it cool while I worked on another. And then when I pulled it off, it would pull off easy. And then it ensured that the uh, the wall bit um, sat upright at a 90 degree and it worked really well. And then I'm going to go in with my hot glue and my, uh, my textured craft sticks and glue across the top. This is going to be your, your big beam for any kind of ceiling. And then you're going to hot glue along the edges and lay a stick down. You can see in this bit here, I actually have it glued over the magnet that ends up not working there the magnets too thick and the walls don't fit nice and flush and so I'm gonna go back in and trim the board just above the magnet something like that there this way the boards sit flush with the foam the uh, walls and and uh, the wall pieces are a bit more well the dimension I'm looking for at the bottom and here you can see my proof of concept piece a little uh, little four inch uh, bit of of tile with some nuts put in and I just uh, I'm checking to make sure that everything is working according to plan then with some of my off cut bits I'm gonna cut the uh, uh, 45 angle and then I'm gonna glue these into the corners not all the corners but some of the corners uh, just to add a little bit of detail add some bracing this really really uh, creates a nice visual effect. If you want all your little braces to be the same, I recommend doing some kind of template or jig. I wasn't too worried about it. I kind of liked uh, the rough look. So some of the pieces have one brace on one of the sides. Some of them have two braces. All the braces are a little bit uh, different in size. Um, and I'm okay with that. I like the rough shod look. The, uh, the design was done on purpose, this stone with wood framing. It's supposed to rep represent or be able to represent a wide range of interiors from dungeon to tavern to castle. I'm really happy with how it turned out. And it's time to turn to the rest of the panels. Here you see a four inch panel. Again, same process, magnets glued on. Glue your top, uh, top beam across the top there. Snip the edges, do the, uh, the vertical beams along the sides, and then as you see fit, do uh, any kind of decorative timber, the little angled bits at the corner, at one or both of the corners, and just have a blast. The more, of, the more panels you make, the better your set will be. Um, and uh, I found that I just had an absolute blast when everything was done and created, just fitting all these panels uh, next to each other and kitty corner from each other and checking out all the different builds and, and fun shapes and, and uh, interiors I could create. I absolutely love this project. Love how it turned out. And uh, man, once the first panel got going, that was it. I just stepped on the gas full bore and just kept at it. It was a ton of work, but so worth it, so worth it. And here, I just can't help but uh, test it out. This was my first, first larger piece with my first little two inch piece. Yeah, four inch with a two inch. And here you can see the concept I'm going for, this nice modularity. Everything uh, snaps right to on those nuts there. 
fantastic. And, well, I can't help but uh, show it to Sir Scale. What do you think, buddy? <laughs> he likes it. He likes it a lot. So, uh, as I kept going, I decided I needed some doorways. Uh, walls were nice, and you really, I guess, don't need the doorways. You could just um, say the doorways are where the walls aren't, and that would work uh, perfectly well. But I wanted these to also work as, like, interiors and uh, interiors, at least human or, or building interiors, have doorways. So I cut out uh, a proper size door and then I just line the, uh, line the edges with some craft sticks. My snipper has a squared off edge and a pinch edge. Just make sure the squared off edge is, uh, is facing the proper way when uh, you cut. That way you get those nice sharp uh, corners when you glue your doorway or your door jam in there. I did uh, a couple, I think four in total, two inch doorways. This is one of them. And I did two four inch, I'm sorry. And I did two larger two inch doorways, one on a four piece or four inch large piece and one on a six inch large piece. And here you can see I just can't stop playing with them. And every time I do a piece, get another piece done, I get even more excited for this project. And here I have Sir Scale uh, deep in all of these pieces here, enjoying my handiwork. God, look at all these pieces. <laughs> and I plan on making more. I plan on making more. I, I absolutely love this set, and uh, I simply ran out of time to keep going. Uh, but I plan on making more pieces, and the best part is once you have your floor tiles down, you can do different wall tiles. And heck, if you, uh, if you feel like it, you could do different floor tiles as well and just completely change the look. Uh, if you could figure out how to bury those nuts in there and then put like a wood grain, you've got like a, a wood floor, uh, which will change the look dramatically. Or just do different paint schemes for your tiles. Yes, I am super excited with this project. I think I'm really on to something great. Um, as I mentioned before, the, the, the base tiles, the 10 by 10 inch base tiles have already been coated in the Black Magic Craft base coat. And I just did the walls there. Now it's time to paint. I turn to my elephant gray and I'm gonna lay that down as the base for my stone work. Just make sure to uh, thoroughly coat all of those uh, stones. God, I love that texture roller and the texture that it's done. And I get better and better at it. Uh, putting more and more pressure down and getting a better and better result every time I use it. Now it's time to go in and paint all those individual stones with light cinnamon, with khaki, and a Mississippi mud. You could skip this step, but I highly recommend you do not. Um, it's amazing the kind of character and the improvement on the paint job when you just go in and pick out some individual stones and pop them with some color. Here you see I'm using the light cinnamon, picking out a few bricks here or there, trying to be random while at the same time um, uh, covering the, the area of the walls with little spatterings of color here and there. Here's the Mississippi mud. Again, the same thing, uh, trying to ran, <laughs> trying to paint randomly. And then I go in with this last color, the khaki. These bricks are much lighter. Uh, so make sure you, uh, you place them with a little bit of thought. But don't worry too much about it because when we go back in with our wash, that wash is gonna tone everything down, blend everything together, and you're going to absolutely love the effect you get. Now that our bricks are all painted up, it's time to turn to our timber, and I'm going to use Apple Barrel's Burnt Umber. Oh my god, the edges. All of the edges. What a pain in the butt this was. So much painting, but it was worth it. They look amazing, 
I love the results. Stick with it. You're going to be happy you did. Get all those edges. Hit them all with that burnt umber. Then go back, get your boards. And then I do the um, sides and top as well in this burnt umber. And that's going to uh, give it the look of rafters, wooden rafters. And that way, if you have any kind of... Uh, uh, roof climbing type characters or anybody hiding in the rafters uh, this will give them that effect then uh, just to let you know for the big the big uh, tiles there the 10 by 10 foot tiles I paint them in my gray storm color uh, a newer color for the channel and I really like it and then once again and this is going to help tie the floor with the walls so I have a different gray so that the walls stand out from the floor but now I'm going to tie them both together and use the light cinnamon and paint all of those hexagon shapes first the nuts and then all the little stamped hexagons as well I'm glad I did it another decision though that cost me uh, an hour or two of time this took a long time to do but I do not regret it it was very much worth it and I love getting those really cool tiles that are a little bit more than just squares so uh, if you take nothing else from this video this really cool hexagon decorated tile uh, looks fantastic when uh, well particularly when all painted up then I turn to my homemade black wash which I'm quickly running out of <laughs> I'm not too happy about that. Hopefully I can uh, recreate something almost as good or just as good, I hope. Um, slather these uh, wall sections with your black wash and do the, the floor as well. And then I'm going to go back in and dry brush all my stonework with a granite gray. First my tiles, just lightly brushing over them letting all the uh, all that tinfoil texture pay off in dividends God, it looks really good and all those little hexagon depressions man I love the way these tiles came out they were a ton of work but very worth it and then I'm going to take that same granite gray and carefully dry brush all that stone work that um, popped up from my texture roller and the these last two steps with the painting the black wash and then this dry brush with the granite gray really really gives life to all the stonework it just freaking pops i'm so happy with this project at this point and now the piste de resistance a little honey brown delicious honey brown I'm gonna dry brush that on the timbers and pick up all of that texture I worked so hard for with the uh, the rasp the file and it pays off big time when you dry brush that honey brown there's no oh man there's no doubt these pieces look fantastic and one of my favorite pieces this large archway on one of my six inch uh, wall pieces here one of my absolute favorite pieces it looks fantastic the painting the texture roller the texture on the timber I'm in love with it I am in love and this is gonna take my interior play to a whole nother level God look at that stonework too my god I'm so happy what do you think sir scale <laughs> I couldn't help but pose him and then it's just set up after set up with video and pictures here we are the shamrock boys are talking with Tinley in an inn I've got multiple rooms set up and oh no what's that the blackjacks have found them and they've burst in looking to catch the shamrocks by surprise What are they gonna do I hope they'll be all right get ready boys the blackjacks are coming I just absolutely I, I absolutely loved getting down low getting in close taking wonderful detailed shots 
these walls, these floors. <sighs> Amazing. You have to try this one. If you're looking for some kind of way to do interiors, I highly recommend this. Highly recommend it. And I can pop all these walls out, switch everything up. Everything is completely, totally modular. So we go from our inn to a throne room. There's Sindora with her guards. And it looks like Tinley and the captain are coming in to have an audience with her. To the right, supply room. To the left, the treasure room. The doorways, the walls. What a great project this ended up being. It was so much work, so much painting and time. I really did mess my hands up really good doing it, but it was 100% worth it. Here we have an old ruin with some demonic, uh, demonic spirit doing some arcane ritual. And Tinley and the Shamrock boys have to battle their way through some undead and get to that demon f before his ritual is complete. Good luck, Shamrocks. We're all rooting for you. Well, did you like this video? Did you like this craft? If you did, you'd help me out big time by smashing that like button. Throw a couple comments in while you're at it. I'd really appreciate it. If you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to hit subscribe. And as always, like each other, love each other, and craft on. Oh, and by the way, did I tell you, this whole darn thing breaks down and fits perfectly in my travel uh, container. Fantastic. I cannot wait to build more walls and expand this set. So look for them in the future. Thanks so much, everybody.